Hello, everybody. Oh. What's up, Twitch? And welcome to Duality Podcast, Duality at Night. And I'm your host, Akasha. Today, we have our special guest, Iman, with us. What's up? And we're going to be talking about a bunch of different things. And just to let anybody know who is new to Duality, kind of what it is, is a podcast on finding balance in an unbalanced world. And just, you know, what we do on our day to day. It's like a lifestyle podcast. It's also a spiritual podcast, but kind of ties everything together. And it's like the podcast. I feel like all the hosts that I do have on here and also being a host on here, it's like the people who wouldn't necessarily be on a podcast. You know, like I <laughs> personally didn't, you know, I kind of got talked into being on this podcast. If you go and like you kind of, listen tune into the journey you see the different people that were on the podcast who kind of created it and how it got to me and that whole journey so I was a shy person who wasn't kind of fully open to doing something and I kind of put myself out there and continue to do that and just listen to what was being asked of me every time I kind of got to the next thing kind of like in a you know Sonic and Mad Games that have that like little orb you know that you go and you have to like follow it and that's like kind of like how spirit is. Like I feel like you know it's like that orb. You gotta go save something. You know, God of War. Like in Sonic, you go to the next destination. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel like that's what our intuition is, and that's our communication with spirit. Whatever that is to you, you know, whatever faith, whatever belief system you have. And um, I feel like it's just a good way to look at it and view it in that way. So that's a little bit about duality and about the podcast. And now what? I was feeling for a little bit to start doing is doing duality at night, whereas like we can kind of hop on a platform that's a little bit less filtered, such as like Instagram and, and Facebook, where it's like we kind of be a little bit more free with what we're speaking and, you know, at different episodes doing different things, you know, we'll kind of kind of see what's going to go on from there and just let it happen. But yeah, that's kind of just the general esque getting here and how we got here <laughs> so yeah now we me and email we're talking about which we constantly talk about all <laughs> the fucking time <Yeah>. is <laughs> denying your truth honoring your truth and you know the different things that come with those two aspects and how the, they show the, up the kickback <laughs> yeah the kickback for when you don't listen to your personal truth and it's like you know, the different things that start to happen and manifest, exactly. you know, when you are denying something, you know, like, say, you know, you're not supposed to be somewhere, right? You have a feeling like, oh, I'm not supposed to be or I don't really want to go somewhere. And then you go anyway to either appease someone else or like, you know, because you feel obligated and then you go and like something happens. Right. And you're like, fuck, like, I should have just stayed home. Like, I knew I wanted to stay home. So you feel like people manifest that? I don't think that people manifest it necessarily. I feel like they're tuning into something that's going to happen. Hmm. And then they become aware of that. And that's what's like, oh, okay, stay home. And then they deny the truth. And then they get caught up in the mix. Like, there's been plenty of times that I've went to a party or um, different events and stuff that I felt like I wasn't supposed to be there you know, at a certain point, and I left. And then right after I left, like, someone got shot at, someone got in a fight, like, something happened. And it would be, like, literally five, ten minutes after I left. Mm -hmm. And th that happened throughout, like, growing up, being a teenager, and, like, going to parties and doing different things, yeah. you know? And it was, like, you know, you never know what's going to happen, but at the same token, you do. Like, you do have kind of an inclination, and everyone's born with that knowing of just whether we honor what we're hearing or not and how much layers are kind of built up in in that in that space so it's like you know how much your artery is clogged to your <laughs> intuition <Yeah>. you know <laughs> and how much like trauma like how much indulgence we have that either contributes um in our day-to-day -to, -day to either clog it or to detox it is really well, up to us i think i think society definitely plays a uh, a big role in That's our job, own sure. um <laughs> i guess you could say impeding of self you know there are a lot of roles that we have to fill um i mean at the end of the day you know if you live a life you probably want to fill a role but you want to choose that role and obviously it's it's got to be something that you're comfortable with doing but you know 
<laughs> unfortunately, especially in an environment like where we live, like New York, like you have to hustle. Maybe some people don't want to. And you can't really expect everybody on earth to have that same, like, vigor. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, it, for us, especially where we are in this environment, it's like we literally have to deny what we truly want so often and just forego all that and get these, you know, careers. And, I mean, to get, you know, ultimately to get a small piece of what we want, but it's not the whole thing. And, you know, I, I feel like that's why sometimes people could even, ha you know, get to a certain point and they have so much, but they're still, like, depressed or miserable, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They're denying some... I mean, obviously, that's not everybody. Some people alleviate themselves from this society, but obviously that takes <laughs> a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? Like, to you know, philanthropists, for example, people that have the money to literally spend on what they want to see happen. The rest of us try to, I guess, we just try to get our peace and then, you know, our little house, our little hole, and we go into that and, you know, retire. So... It's 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 like there's a duality in that. It's like you kind of have to forego your truth sometimes to get to the point where you can live your truth. Mm -hmm. And that process is hard for a lot of people. Especially I mean. <laughs> when you're conscious of it. Of course. Like especially when you're conscious of it cuz I feel like there's a there's people that go through that process that aren't conscious of it. You know, and then there's people that are hyper conscious of the fact that they need to work this nine to five to get to a certain degree, but because you're aware of it, it almost makes you like, <laughs> like so angry. You it's, know, it's we yeah, it's weird because it's like, you know, I, I was you know, personally like, what do you have to sacrifice to be able to to do that mundane shit every fucking day? You know what I'm saying? And be professional about it and be energetic and all this other shit. You know what I mean? When you just want to sit on a beach and <laughs> You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that I'm lazy or I don't want to do anything. It's just like, you know. We want to be able to this, chill and, this, like, have an experience. But shouldn't, shouldn't that really be what life is about? You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, we can work like this. It's possible, but it's it's not, you know, life is about quality at the end of the day. So. And it's not ideal but to again, be in we, that position. But, again, our society really puts us in a in a hard spot when it comes to being an individual and – you know, sacrificing like how much of that to to just live. So, yeah, it's a it's a hard thing. I feel like it's also there's you know. Um, well, I want to ask you a question actually. Like, do you think that you could kind of jump a timeline when you become a certain level of consciousness of like what it is that you're supposed to fulfill and what you're supposed to do that you can kind of if you followed your intuition and a flow of things that you can kind of escape the matrix in a certain way. Absolutely, that is the. And, I'm, you know, you could watch plenty of um, inspirational talks on YouTube about it, you know, <laughs> before it became cool. And all the successful people will pretty much, you know, in so many words, tell you the same thing. It's That's how it works, really. But um, that is not the easiest thing to achieve. And there's definitely what no one wants to give any weight to. There's There's definitely the the stage where you have to forego yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in, like, songwriting. Like, if you want to make money with songwriting, right, you can't write about your, like, even if you want to do that, you want to write from your heart, from directly from your experiences, even if you do, you have to make it relatable for the listener. You have to generalize it. You so have to, like exactly, you have to forego well. yourself so it's mm -hmm. a, a, an actual product that someone else can consume. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, like, you know, musicians that's they that's the step that they can't get past like they could be even be like cr really good at like rapping or whatever they do but if if you can't forego yourself and it's ironic because it's like you're doing right you're doing this for yourself you're becoming a musician to live this particular life because you want to live it like that and you want to you basically want to get paid to speak your truth but you have to speak everybody's truth as a as like a public symbol or whatever like you know what i'm saying like you can't really just be like oh my specific experience is this and you know expect people to like want to bop to that you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's not going <laughs> to it's like, not going to happen bro like, there's literally a formula like you have to say you and talk about the listener like so it's just foregoing yourself is just it's easy to get lost in either direction it's really hard to hold that balance of like getting lost in 
becoming what you have to become temporarily to get to your goal, you know, and maybe that does happen to most people, not every single successful person, but, you know, I don't know, like Elon Musk, I feel like he's definitely gone off the rails, for example, like he's like what you said before. He followed a specific path, it cut through all the bullshit. Right. He definitely mm-hmm. did. Absolutely. Yeah. Him and a lot of other, you know, people younger, these, you know, our age, like with this whole crypto thing, like people are getting rich overnight and they're becoming billionaires. And they're definitely doing that. But it's like, you know, what do they lose in the process? Or what's what's like the cap of money that you can make and you're still you and you're actually able to, before you get lost in some like, tangent well you know i think those two people. things <laughs> i think those two things are separate in my personal opinion i feel like when it comes to like fi- being successful and following your passion and your purpose and also and being financially successful in those two things are the two separate things like you know somebody could maybe not jump a timeline or to get uh finances but they can like or maybe they can jump a timeline to get the finances but it's like you know everything comes with a sacrifice Right. When every choice comes with a consequence, comes with a reward, you know, whatever the case is. So, like, there are people that are out here, like, you know, selling themselves to get ahead and, like, you know, find these shortcuts. And then there's also that other aspect of, like, not necessarily a shortcut, but it's, like, the the narrow path. You know, they say it in, in the Bible. They say it in a lot of different religions, like, the narrow path rather than the wide path, where it's, like, it's there. You know, and something we were talking about before is, like, you can walk your path and in in the process of you know understanding and working towards finding your truth especially when you're fixating on it and when you are like pursuing it avidly pursuing that truth to know your truth to walk in it to embody it there's all these side quests mm-hmm. and a side quest that <laughs> I, have, I like that analogy you know and it's like okay i can go do this you know i can get some red orbs but i don't need it to complete this game you know, I could I could get extra points. I could get all these extra trophies and acknowledgments, which can help. But you don't need it for every side quest. And I feel like that's that's something that's also important to note when you are on your path is like, OK, you know, not everybody what there's like not everybody who offers you. Not everybody who offers you something actually wants to give you a gift, Absolutely you know, not. <laughs> and not and and also like if you're constantly asking for water, it's only a matter of time before you're poisoned. You're just accepting everything. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you're accepting everything, when you're taking every single side quest, every single challenge, decisiveness is definitely um, a, a big part of it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, I mean. We we are kind of timed being here, right? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like a degree, clock is yeah. ticking, so you can't really like, you know, waste your time doing everything, and it will definitely impede you. But yeah, I mean, there's that aspect of the being decisive and cutting through that. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah, I mean, you know, for for whoever's listening, like, I mean, I'm sure most people are in the same situation that you know, it's it's there's so many different angles of like pressure that like keep you from being or behaving according to what's true to you. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's, I think it's, I think it's something that society needs to like begin to take note. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone's getting so interested in like mental health. It's like, yeah, but when are we going to look at like, why, (laughs) why, why are people like, depressed why are people breaking down why are they Mm -hmm. having like schizophrenic episodes and you know what i'm saying like you think you're good when you're a teenager and you go through your 20s and you begin to notice like damn i have like some crazy like you know what i mean i have to work through this to just to be normal and is that normal or like like if i was even here if i had my own farm and i was to grow my own food would it would i have to feel the pressure of changing myself Mm -hmm. and like you know what I'm saying? Like it, we're we're adapting, but we have all of these sacrifices kinda, that come with adapting. That's like what I'm saying. It's kind of useless, though. It's almost like why do we have to? It's just like we have to adapt from you know for many reasons that aren't you know. Even you were telling me before, like you were saying your your elder, like teaches like how to return back to nature. Yeah, that return back to myself. That that's such an essential thing, bro. Like I feel like mm-hmm. that's that's so. We need that. We need more of that. When it comes to simplifying, you know, something that I didn't really get into on the daytime podcast that I'm feeling called to kind of like just touch base on right now is, um, you know, I did this. I did this ceremony where you you literally take everything away from you. 
you are fasting for four and a half days, no food, no water, five nights. And you, when you take everything away from you, when you realize how much you consume, and then you realize why you consume food sometimes and why you consume water sometimes, and it's, like, not even on a survival. It's on, like, a stimulation mm -hmm. aspect, yeah, right? Definitely. And it's, like, also, like, you know, the different endorphins that we get in our in our in our brain the chemicals that get let off and all these different stuff that happens in our body when we do different things and the same thing happens when you consume social media when hmm. you are you know consuming any media when you're having conversation with a person you know i couldn't speak to people i couldn't look at people i couldn't speak to people and i was by myself in the woods like so you're saying alone. you had no input period you were just it was just it was just me that's crazy and it was just me in nature and when you take everything away from your from yourself, like, and like, like believe me, like on the third day, I'm like, why the fuck did I do this? Like, <laughs> why the fuck am I out here? Like, what am I actually doing? Like, you know, why? Why is this something that I chose to do? And like, like I was bugging the fuck out at a certain point because like, if it's anything, I didn't care about food. I didn't really care about talking to people. I didn't care about social media. That was the last fucking thing I was thinking about was anything electronic. Yeah, like, right. it was simply, in the in the root of it all was water. Water. That's water, crazy. Water. Like, water was, like, the main thing that I was, like, ready to, like, lose my fucking mind. Like, water, you know? That's crazy. And it's the most important thing and something that we constantly take for granted you know, it's like... I mean, it's the majority of what we are. So. It's literally 70% <laughs> of us. You know, it's like, yeah. it's within us. And like, when you don't, when you go without it for so long, that's depleting as well. You're well, that's your, literally... I mean, your physical being is literally screaming out. Like, like every, I'm gonna you know die, I mean? give me water. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, at that point, when you get... When you take these layers back, you know, it's... um. It's really, really interesting what's get, what gets shown to you and what becomes a lot more clearer when you're not consuming. And then you realize, like, holy shit, like, on a regular day, I'm consuming so much, like, so much other people's input, all these different things. Like, a lot of people don't realize that they're not living their truth because they believe that their truth is what their parents told them or what their, the people that raised yes. them told them or society <laughs> exactly. told them. So they think they're living their truth. But they're denying and suppressing their truth because they might not even have access to that knowledge yet because you have to get to that breakthrough first understanding that you are not what other people believe you to be. And the crazy thing is, too, that they like then inwardly because what they naturally feel doesn't align itself with society. They then like kind of like hate themselves or like they take it, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. they like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't really gauge, like, is is there something or, is, like, I'm not jiving with this. I'm, there's no synergy between me and this situation that I have to live in. Like, mm -hmm. that's such a, you know. That's when you're forcing something. And the universe, you know, science, physics, everything does not, like, force. Like, if you're forcing something, you're pushing the other thing away. You're not, you're not allowing it to naturally and organically have what it's innately going to do. I think that's such that's so indicative of Western society, though. It's, mm -hmm. it's funny that you say it like that, because it's like everything, like even like cocaine, like you had to take the coca leaf and literally fucking bleed it dry and extract it. And, One and, and, alkaloid and out of like, like forty-seven alkaloids within the plant. It's just like everything about this. Even even like if you get like, it's convenience too, though. It's just because they're like, like okay, that, coca leaf. Like, even like weed extracts. It's just like yo, let's just like. Like, bro, like, god damn. Yeah, well, like, the same thing. With, same <laughs> you gotta thing strip with everything down and, and like, Uber calcify eats. it and, like, make it into this little Uber pill eats and seamless. All of the, like, nobody is calling restaurants anymore. Like, everything is down to convenience. Everything's gotta be packaged and, and it needs compressed to be. and fucking. And we're, we're the same way. Disconnected from source and its entire being. And we think, and we think it's normal. We, we've fooled ourselves into thinking it's normal. Mm -hmm. So when we are really ourselves, we, we're just like, <laughs> we're, 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 it's it's we're so used to instant gratification yeah there's that too. there's like that because that's really what it all comes down to is like the convenience for instant gratification like when you start looking at how humanity has um civilized or evolved in you know all these different things that we've done it's all surrounded by what's easiest what's easiest what's more convenient that's, that's i mean you know it's and funny it too, takes away from like the natural aspect like you said we're water water always takes the path of least resistance so 
Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of it kind of makes me think it's like it's almost like the powers that be, whoever that is, right? Like they they play on that intrinsic like notion that if you make something easy, if you give someone an easy path, they're they're gonna take it. It's mm-hmm. it's the it's a law of nature almost, and it's kind of used against us. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's what leads us into you know. I mean, but convenience is it's it's like in pot. Come on. You know, yeah. what I mean? you're not gonna. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, you're not gonna make yourself live in the Stone Age in the middle of a city. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're not gonna cut off your electricity. Like, there's definitely, there's definitely ways to find balance in that too, though. Is like, you know, like, okay, maybe uh, a water bottle is more convenient, but I'm going to invest in a water filter so that I don't consume more plastic. And even though it might be annoying because I have to wait for my water to be purified in this water Absolutely. filter. It's not, you're not having the instant gratification, but you're taking that time. That's finding the balance, you know, instead of being like, well, I'm just never going to like, I'm I'm only going to just just drink tap water because I could turn it on or I'm just Mm going to still drink water bottles because it's convenient and it's easier for me. I don't have to wash a dish. They put all the the alkaline in it. Exactly. It's like you take a moment, you take a moment and you do these things yourself and you realize actually like when you, and especially like when you're making things too, like that's why it's so important that we give like acknowledgement and credit to the people who hand make things. Like if you are like concerned that you can't afford or have something that is handmade and you will spend money on the newest Jordan's drop or the newest game or whatever the case is but then you really second guess someone who's like handcrafting something and whether you're going to purchase it or not like you really need to like sit and evaluate the fact that not we're not machines like we're not machines like people are people and they time is also of the essence and valuable so not only the materials they got because yeah you know maybe maybe they flipped Maybe it's like not, it's more than half, right? Like maybe their their profit margin is is more than 50% or whatever the case is. But at the same token, you have to account for your time. The time that the intention, it feels different when you feel something that is made from a machine. And when you pick something up that's been like passed down and made from someone's grandma, like you mm-hmm. feel it. You feel when someone has even a, like, you know, like a cast iron skillet. And it's been like broken in and used for years by somebody, you know, and then or when you get something like completely brand new, fresh, that's like now in this age is going to be machines without a doubt. Like yeah, back in the day, there was more of a chance that there was a person at least helping in certain aspects of it. Right. Create these things. So it's it's interesting how, you know, the more <laughs> it's something something that when I was out out on. Um, out on my fast that kept on ringing in my head. I don't know if you or if, if anybody on here watching has heard the song. Um, I forgot. I think it's called. I want to say it's called Circle, but I'm not sure. No, the com- the climb back by J. Cole. In the beginning, there's a, a, a voice. I'm not sure who it is, but it's like an older voice of like someone either like a Rumi or like a, some kind of philosopher saying something, right? Mm-hmm. In the beginning, he says, are you doing this? to facilitate growth or to become famous? What is more important, gaining or letting go? And then the song starts, right? And the part that kept on replaying in my head that I kept on hearing was, are you doing, like, are you, what is more important, gaining or letting go? And it's like the Hmm. older I get, the more I realize that for me personally, what I think in life is like, letting go you know we think oh what can i gain to get here what can i gain to make more money or to find a bigger platform or to do all these different things it's like what if it's about letting go what if it's about letting go to make room because how can you add something if you have no room like how can you be full 100 percent on your memory card and you're trying to add a whole new download a whole new game like you can't do it you have to let go of one of the games that you already played before that you 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 appreciate what it is you have it in your mind you have that experience okay i'm gonna i'm gonna delete this and i'm gonna Make space for something completely new for that new experience. You have to let go of things in order to feel something new, even if it's old, if you want a new experience from it. Absolutely. You know, so that was something that like really came up. And that was when everything was pulled away from me. You know, you think you gain something when you get things pulled away from you, but you actually just continue to take more things away, you Mm -hmm. know, and simplify even more. And probably get closer to the source. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And removing all the bullshit. Yeah, I mean... I, I like what you were saying before about like uh, that's I think that's a whole subject in itself too about like water people controlling their own 
water. Mm. I think mm-hmm. like that is such a. Uh, hopefully, that becomes like a a, a cultural pressure, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like if you're not, if you don't have like a distilling machine in your crib and you're not purifying your own water, like you're a piece of shit. That would definitely <laughs> like. Think, yeah. That would definitely maybe, maybe like, like a fine, you like, know, maybe like I, a fine. No, 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 not a fine. Like I would rather like people <laughs> like, just be like, "Yo, you're an asshole." You know what I'm saying? Like, get with the program. That's already. true. That's I don't want to get fined. Yeah, no, nah, we don't need. We don't need. Yeah, we definitely don't need to be giving <laughs> yeah. like the government I mean, or anybody any more money. Realistically, that's how it would go, though, right? Yeah, it would get to that, that point, be. like, you know what I'm saying? If you're not, you we're get, just like you. You just get booed everywhere you go because yeah. you don't have a filter. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like as, by comparison, whereas like the societal pressures now just you know make you. I mean, you need to drink water. Like if you work in the city, like I I, I hate buying bottled water, but I do it every every day, and I think about it every time, and like I'm just contributing to this like plastic uh, conglomerate that's floating around in the ocean somehow, some way, and like you know what I'm talking about, like, yeah. and like. But then I still have to drink that water to continue walking around the city doing what I'm doing. Well, sometimes you have to purchase things. But when you do, when you're looking in the water, now there's things like there's the box water from uh, Will Smith's son that you can buy that and then you just recycle it. Where's that? Where they got that? It's the box water. It's like the blue one. It's a just water, I believe it is. And you can buy some like that. Look, especially in the city, look at the waters rather than just going there and grabbing. Take a moment. You know what I'm saying? And work with the best option that you have. I don't just drink anything. I drink Essentia, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Wait, I mean, that's okay. It's a good one. You know what I'm saying? But the ones that I'm talking about are good ones. Like, if they're eco-friendly, that means that they are good what is you I'll, know I'll what definitely I mean? keep my eye out for it I'm so it's like just just paying attention to that and then making sure that you get it into a recycle you do the best you can and not to feel guilty like there's certain things that you know i learned this on my on my vegan journey right mm. right i was like on and off vegetarian since i was 13 are you still on and the journey no i'm not a vegan anymore oh, okay. so i i'm i'm a sorcetarian that is like that is really what i feel That's, about food again it's like source coming back to the yeah because yeah, like because like, so <laughs> my journey with that is like at the time there was times where i was a vegan where i could afford certain things and then there was times that i i couldn't afford i couldn't afford to be a vegan and like why you know is because like i i'm not going to purchase genetically modified pesticide sprayed vegetables whether to like in over an organic product and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm just vegan. Like when I can get, when I have more of a chance of getting better source things by someone who offered me a meal at times that I was down and out financially by people making things and cooking it with love and doing this in that way where it's like beggars can't be choosers. When you're in a certain kind of struggle yeah. and you don't have the money to, you know, uphold a certain thing, like you shouldn't have to feel guilty for that. You know, you shouldn't have to be made to feel like such a villain. Like, oh, okay, I d- I'm working in the city. I don't have room to, like, you don't have a water filter, right? You haven't figured that out, them out yet. You don't have to feel guilty for that. You just make the best of what you do. So I had to make the best of what I did. And I learned that when I was, like, down and out with money, whatever food I had, my biggest thing was my prayer and my intention, you're alchemizing it, right? There's studies by uh, Dr. <sighs> what is his name? He's the water doctor. I believe he's a Japanese man. Um, I forgot his I forgot his name, but he does a study where there's different cups of water and he'll be like, I hate you to one or have a recording. Oh yeah, like, yeah, I've seen that, yeah. And it breaks the molecules up and it literally makes it like toxic. And they'll like freeze it and the, the crystals will form differently. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and the same thing happens and when you say I love you or just nothing, like you see the different things in the molecule. It's a it's a science. You it's actual science. Yes, Everything it's quantum, is vibration. Quantum physics, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Everything is vibration. So now when you think about that when it comes to food. You may not always be able to get the best source things, but you do your best. You do your best in anything that you can, and you put a prayer into it, or you put an intention to it, or you put a vibration into it. For anyone, if any of those words are not appealing to you, you put a vibration into it, and you thank it for whatever it is. And when you speak that into it, that's why it's important to know where you're getting your food from. Who's cooking it? What if someone's yeah. in a bad mood and they're putting all Hell that yeah, shit bro. into it, and you like, and then you pick it up and you end up getting sick from Yo, it? Yeah, I feel you like, know? <laughs> like it. There that. That's a real, real thing. And then you That's also know thing, sometimes bro. like you could have you could have the same recipe as somebody. Right. But nobody will make it like that one person. Nobody will make it and because that one person, they have that ingredient. The ingredient is their intention or whatever they're saying, you know, while they're cooking it. It tastes different. And then when you take when you can and you do have accessibility 
and you choose to not be lazy about it, right? Because we always the convenience. Well, it's convenient for me to go to the store and get any old kind of meat or any old kind of uh, vegetables. But what takes more effort, if I have the means, of course, is to, you know, look into a farm that maybe is going to ship something and and buy my my meat in bulk that is grass fed and owned by a small farmer that has cattle and is treating them in a good way and is you know only they're on grass fed diet you know and all these different things where it's just acknowledging these different things the source and doing your best with what you got because we don't always have the option you know if you are if you're starving and someone's gonna hand you you know mcdonald's you know sure. whatever the case is like and you, you and you don't have no money and whatever the case is like you 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 yeah, you, you pray that over McDonald's. that food. You pray over that food. You definitely know what I'm saying? Like, and you think not only the food and alchemize the food, but you thank the people who made it. So you're while you're doing that, you're literally alchemizing your life. You are you are redirecting and changing the vibrations and molecular structures in something by your vibrations that you are generating. It's so deep, and we have so much more power than we give ourselves credit for mm -hmm. when it comes to all these things, and especially with water. I've seen it with water. There's a prayer that I was taught. Yeah, it's very malleable. It's easy to manipulate. With water in particular, there's yeah. a prayer that is um, it's a song, and it's a song and a prayer that is said, uh, that was sung at uh, Lake Fukushima that helped to purify it from the... Um, toxic from the the bomb. Oh shit! You know? Really? So then, That's like crazy. people were saying around it, they would pray over it, and it literally and said that when you sing the song, it purifies your body because we're seventy percent water. So sometimes, if I only have access to tap water, I'll take the tap water and I'll, and I'll pray over it. You know, and I'll sing that song. And there's been times, you know, whether y'all believe it or not, like I literally have seen cloudy water like bubble up and become clear. Like, on some real shit. Like, and it's crazy. We have that power. And it's not just me. It's I believe it, and I'm saying the words that were taught to me. Now, if you believe and you say the words that you were taught to you, you could also do it. The same way we inflict the trauma and the cycles of denying our truth, we can do the opposite in igniting hmm. people to believe in their truth by embodying and believing in our truth. Because now when we flip the perspective... That is where the power comes. It is so fucking easy to sit here and be like, why the fuck am I working this job? Why am I doing this? Ah, all this shit sucks. Like, ah, this is not what, you know, I, don't, I know this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. And like to beat yourself up, it is too easy to do that. We are all very, very well equipped into dismantling who we are as people. This is what hinders us from moving forward. But when you can say, you know what? I am not necessarily where I would ideally like to be and that's okay but i'm not gonna start i'm not gonna stop i'm not gonna stop fighting maybe i'll stop for a day because i need a rest because it's okay you like and many people do that many people in the caribbean south america and europe they believe like you when you need to take that rest you take that rest and like that's really important for you to just do that and like every other culture but america that is like okay but after you're done with that rest, you get right back into it and you allow yourself to go. Because when you completely remove yourself, when you give yourself too much lax and you're like, oh, I'm not feeling into it. I'm not going to do it. All of a sudden, weeks go by, months go by, and now you still didn't do it. And you hate yourself that much more because you didn't do something. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other aspect where you push too hard and you do too much and then you crash and burn. How can we utilize our experiences and our knowledge on these different topics and different experiences we've had in life to find that balance? Balance is not a place that you go and you hang out at. It's a place that you're constantly it's like, a, yeah, you're walking a tightrope, yeah, you know? Ma it's maintenance. It's, it's maintenance, maintenance it's a, and it's, it's a maze active, to get back to it. It's definitely an, an active endeavor, you know what I mean? Balancing. Definitely, you have to be conscious of it, you know? That makes a, That's a really good analogy, too, because obviously if someone's walking a tightrope and they pass out, you know what I mean? They're going to... Fall. <laughs> you have to be constantly vigilant yeah, like, exactly, staying on right. it or it's like what is that in music um the oh the metronome balances the line in between you know it's like the metronome is us constantly moving from yin to yang yin to yang back and forth like from the different polarities within our I individuality think, you know, and then the most people center. find it i guess eventually but it's just like a matter of time um I feel like the average age for like really finding balance is probably your 
I feel like I'm kind of like encroaching it finally. Definitely, I mean, whoever finds it in their twenties, you're you know what I'm saying, you're a better <laughs> better human than me. But yeah, it's it's just like the it it's just to go back to that, you know, it's like you gotta find your niche in this system first and it's really hard to it's a it's hard to forego yourself to do that and then it's hard once you're there to get back to what you were you know about in the first place or the core of your whole you know what i'm saying in some people's cases your their existence you know mm -hmm. or just you know whatever you want to do like it's it's really like you said it's hard to strike that balance you either go so far down something like oh you just forget like i was gonna be successful in this corporate job and you know what i'm saying and i don't know who was i talking to i was talking to some like one of the dudes that works in one of the buildings i service or whatever and he was uh, he, he was talking about that movie soul mm. and the part did you see that mm -hmm. it was a pretty good movie yeah, the, really the lost movie. like the lost souls part like mm -hmm. that was really like like whether it looks like that for real or not in that other dimension, no, that like hit, it, that really yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah, no, right? that hit. That's OD, what I'm saying, bro. That whole OD, plot was OD, like, yeah, bro. no, for OD. sure, for sure. Od, you know what I'm saying? It's so easy to to lose that balance. It's, I, I really like what you said there. It really is maintenance. It's a an active, you know what I'm saying? An active endeavor at all times. And that's just like everything else, you know. That's like, and that's why I feel like because of we're so prone to convenience, we're so prone to instant gratification. So many people give up on things that are literally handcrafted and designed for them to pursue. But because it's not instantly filling their cup or it's challenging them well, in ways. It's a cultural thing. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, 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 I really hope that we get to a point where um, just, you know, it, it just resonates to a point where even on the most basic level of a culture, like, people are more thoughtful and mm -hmm. considerate about everything really i mean that that would change a lot it seems so simple but it starts with us you know like we can't talk on a global scale unless we're doing it and embodying it within ourselves so what can we do the <laughs> best for ourselves you know we can't be like oh okay you know well i hope the world gets like this and then we're, we ain't doing shit you know about it with ourselves you know it, to have the knowledge is one thing you know it's like the same thing with communication like to have the communication is one thing but to have the comprehension is another thing now to have the awareness of something but then put the action into that awareness is another thing absolutely i mean that's but again it, it just it makes it really hard when the box you live in has rules and mm -hmm. you have to follow them to survive mm -hmm. you know what i mean i feel like the people who lead us have to do a better job at you know, having the rules not so much follow things like, you know, economics or, like, money <laughs> and, you know, following things like sustainability. Like, mm -hmm. that's obviously that I probably sound <clears throat> cliche, but it's it needs to be a, a, a societal norm at this point. Like, we don't really even have, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's on the topic that you were talking about before, you know, the different societies and the different, like, ways. It's, like, either... But, I mean, there are societies that are actually practicing that, so I can't say that. But I'm just yeah. saying, like, in, in, in general. Well, as a I mean? global scale, you know, it's like at the end of the day, like, the earth isn't going to die. It's going to be, it was here much long before yeah, us. Of, it will be much long first. after. We will be the ones that But, leave. like, here's my thing. Like, how do you get, at the same time, like, how do you get someone in, like, um, you know, maybe I'm wrong about this. Like, someone in a really poor country, mm -hmm. like, to they're not thinking about environmental you know they'll add to it or not or i'm not saying that they even have the money to buy things but mm -hmm. they there's a lot of environments even like where just like trash shows up and i mean these people sometimes recycle it reuse it but they're not like actively they it's it, it, they have a more immediate situation which is mm -hmm. like eating and they don't live in a society where you could just hunt or grow your food. They probably don't even have land, so they just have to subscribe to this system that we've created. And the system that we've created just follows profit, you know? And, I mean, I I guess you need to make money to run a business, and you know, on a very basic level, but, like, it, it's just we just bypass sustainability. We bypass... Humanity all, and human yeah, decency. And, and it... Again, it, like you, everyone knows that part of their truth is living sustainably and living a complete life. 
you know what I'm saying? And and everything that you do, for everything you take, you give back. And, and you know what I'm saying? Like, we all know deep down, I'm, I'm not trying to speak for anybody, but if you could do that in your way, in the way you know how, with, without any impediments from, like, you know. So, for example, like, what if, like, people waking up at 10 a.m. is just better for their mentality and they could probably do more or, you know what I'm saying? But we're just... For some reason, we gotta like wake up early. We gotta forego sleep. We gotta stay up late. We, you know, we don't do things in a way that like works with our bodies, mm -hmm. with what we want. We fool ourselves, and then, you know, when you know, really, like your optimal brain doesn't start until ten a.m. To be honest with you, you know what I mean. And like, there's some alternative like schools and things like that that actually are be beginning to consider, you know, a, just a different schedule. Like this whole like seven days a week. Wake up at, I mean, I, well, I wake up every day pretty early, you know, and I usually get home at a, at a decent time. But, you know, it, it's just like I'm doing all this. Most of my day sometimes could be called just like filling space. And I'm sure the same thing for anybody else. Like, you know what I mean? Like how much productivity can you actually get done in in whatever position you're at? You got to waste eight hours of your life being there. You know, you could be doing things for yourself. But and you're so tired to do it by the you're, time you get home. That's you just want to like, like the hardest. Yeah. Yo, it's you know what I'm saying. Like you're you're exhausted. You you mm -hmm. give someone else all your mental energy, all your spiritual energy, whatever you want to call it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. And you just spent at the end of the day. And then once once you've given up your energy for the day, you instantly subscribe to convenience. Once again, you just all right. Like because because why would you just want to make everything you know work at that point? Mm -hmm. So as I'm saying, it's just hard to get out of that cycle like how can we spread awareness about uh, sustainable practices in everything that we do like something that'll actually lend to mental health and you know what i'm saying it, it's i think it's all about the balance of embodying it and also doing your part and feeling that you know some people's roles are to start a nonprofit to do different things some people's roles are to just like to teach it to teach their kids how to live better. Some people's roles are to do it themselves and to teach them and unlearn things and let go of things and, and minimize. You know, like, everyone has a different role and no role looks the same. So mm. it's about us discovering that by also peeling back those layers to then further look at our truth, you know, and see what is our truth, what is our path. There is nobody in the world that can tell you more about you besides you. Not your mother, not your brother, not your sister, not your partner, not nobody can understand what your life path is more than you. Not no reader, not nobody can tell you. Is it's in it's up to and in my personal opinion, I believe that you get more and more closer to it the more you take away. Like something that was a huge catalyst for that is even prior to that big fast I did, I started fasting on the day that I'm born. You know, I used to do, I haven't done, I need to get back into it, but Wednesdays, I'm born on Wednesday. And it's said that if you fast on the day that you're born, it brings you closer to your purpose. Why is fasting so important? You know, why is it such a thing that in so many different cultures and, and any enlightened person, whether it's Jesus or Buddha or whoever it is that you read about, you know, uh, Dr. Azui who created Reiki, like 21 day fast, like all these different people who had these fasts, right? What is it about that? And once again, it's about, like, my personal opinion, I think it's about letting go and minimizing and taking away all of the things that we use to stimulate ourselves or fill space or <laughs> distract or, you know, evade. And the more you listen and give yourself that attention, the clearer you can become and then not easier life will be, but the more easeful things will flow. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. It definitely does. I mean, yeah, it's accepting truth is definitely not an easy thing, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it comes with a whole bag of things. It's not just, you know, what you want it to be. Obviously, everybody knows that. Especially when it contradicts everything you think you want. Well, again, like, that, com that what you think you want is usually based around what you think you need to do to survive. Mm -hmm. you know and what you've been taught and mm -hmm. what has been imprinted on you throughout the years yeah would you give any what advice would you give to anybody who you know may be struggling with um accepting certain truths in their life um 
this might sound corny, but I think um, a lot of like anxiety sometimes. Uh, you know, when we think of things that we don't want to, uh, the first thing I feel like happens is we we start breathing like incorrectly. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, like some form of like light meditation. You know, taking a deep breath and just accepting the truth as you breathe out and. That doesn't need to be something that you tell anyone. It could happen in the middle of the day. You could be walking down the street. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's probably the best time to do it because you're in motion. You'll get past it and just <laughs> move on to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? But definitely give yourself whatever space you need to do so. And, I mean, I think it's personally, you know, when you deny what your truth is, you definitely you end up doing things inexplicably. Like, you it, you kind of just, like, burst at the seams. You know what I mean? I think we were having a conversation the other day about, and I, I made an analogy where it's like, you know, your your truth should, or whatever whatever energy is flowing through you, whatever is, like, motivating you, should it should move like water, like what we are, like a river. It shouldn't be dammed up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's going to continually flow, and it's not like it's just static water just sitting there. It's, it's like obstructed. It's moving water, like and yeah, exactly, and eventually it's... It's, you know, just any water that gets through is going to be highly pressurized and erratic because it's it's being stopped. But it's not it's never going to stop. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Until, you know, that's your life. Yeah. You have to let that those impediments. And I mean, you know, who, who the hell am I preaching to? You know what I'm saying? This is probably newer wisdom, you know, even from someone like me that thinks they <laughs> know everything. You know what I mean? Simple shit like that. Like, you know, yeah, like definitely. <clears throat> running away from that shit it just wastes your time. You know, the, it, it wastes the most valuable resource that that we have trying to deny truth, you know. And that, that I guess, because at some point you're going to come to terms with it. And then... Well, is it wasting your time or is it just making everything really, like, on max volume until you finally get it through your thick head that that's exactly what it's for? Because it's like... That's a good it's point. It's like, it's not necessarily wasting your time, it's just making it longer, making the process longer. In my case, I feel like I've wasted a lot of my time just doing other things when I, I could have, like, stuck the route or, you know but what I mean? But you learned, like, you know? You learned, and you know, even if there's side quests that were involved, you just got some extra <laughs> red orbs. That's I like it. that side quest. That's it for real, because like that's what it is. You know, is like how many how many things? It's just about the application out there. You know, instead of being like, "Wow, I wasted time," it's like shifting that perspective because I know we all feel like that at times, especially like different things we experience, whether it's a job or a relationship. Like, oh my god, I can't believe I wasted so much time on this, like on this person, on this thing, so much money, so much time, so much this, so much that. Like, like oh god, I can't believe I did that. But it's like, you know, maybe not. What did you? Because that's looking at it in the scope of what did I gain. Or what did I lose that I was supposed to gain? But really, if you take back from it and change your perspective, maybe you lost something. Maybe you lost something that was good for you to lose. Maybe, you know, you got into a relationship with somebody because they were validating you because maybe you weren't validated in your life or invalidated, really. And then in a relationship, you realized, wow, I was with this person because of this validation thing. And then you lose that. You don't need to be validated mm -hmm. in your next relationship. Mm -hmm. So then you can change your perspective and change that narrative and turn that grump, you know, grumpy grump, <laughs> into like, oh, shit, like, I, I, I understand why this is happening. Because, like, yeah. even the most traumatic things that I've experienced in my life, like, I could look at certain things that I remember, like, I remember at, like, this is, like, fucking crazy. <laughs> like, and, and wild. Like, I remember at my dad's funeral, someone saying like probably awkward didn't know what to say but like strongly recommend if you don't know what to say especially at someone's funeral don't say anything Chill. um but they were like you know everything happens for a reason right Chill. i'm like 17 years old at my yeah, father's word. funeral like, you know someone said like oh nah, you know everything happens for a reason and i just like looked at this person and i was just like like with the rage of a thousand sons i was just like with this person has no fucking idea what the fuck is going on in life that's insane but now, That's just out of you know, it's completely out of pocket. But with all of, like, the self-reflection work and the things that I've, like, come to know and unknow and the way that I view the scope on things, like, not that, yeah, everything does happen for a reason. The reason's not always good. The reason's not always bad. But everything is there's a cause and effect. That statement is true. 
was that the time and place for it? Absolutely fucking not. That's something I needed to come to. But at points of my life, I came to that. Like, wow, like if this didn't happen in this way, this would never have been existent. Who knows what would have happened there? Like, I can't even think about that timeline and be like, well, that's what was supposed to happen. This is just what happened. And then that's accepting the truth. And once you learn to accept the truth and surrender to the truth, things become more bearable. When when we're trying to like yeah, force sure. things, even the most fucked up things that could happen to us or other people, force that, you know, this is like this is this, and I da, 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 and like that narrative, it hurts us more than anything else. You know, and it's not to let everything okay and to be okay with everything. No, but it's about that forgiveness for yourself. You know, that forgiveness and being like, yo, what you did was fucked up, was wrong, could never be like, I can never like maybe be in the same room or respect you as like a human person. But I understand why you did this because you had something done to you or something was inflicted on you. You know, like there's there's always a cause and effect. Everything does happen for a reason. Reason's not always good. But if you have that understanding within yourself where you take the time to understand even the worst things that you've done even the worst things that we've done as people where that make us fucking cringe when we think back at it those things when you're teenagers or young adults or whatever or kids that like we think back and we're like oh my god I, I could live my whole life without ever thinking about that again like when we you're saying not to feel that way about it to, to let it just when you accept it when you're just like yo i did my best literally yeah, yo i, I mean, did like, my best and human, it changes like, yeah like we're human like the, what 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 idea are you trying to live up to you know what i'm saying like <laughs> that's like again I, I feel like that is highly attributed especially these days to like you know social media and things like that like because we, we have this like pictorial representation of what this constant pictorial representation being fed to you every day, like, oh, this is how the proper life should be lived. And, like, any of your experience that don't resonate with this obviously fake thing anyway, mm -hmm. you, you, you know. Feel you feel invalid. Yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, like, it's, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's why, I personally, I don't have a social media or any of that stuff. I, I felt that um, really a couple of years ago. I, you know, I had it at first and then made another one. I deleted it again, but. You know, even if it, like, hurts me professionally, I guess it's, like, f do you think social media is going to be the future forever? Do you think it's, you think we're always going to have avatars online that, that we have to try to live up to? And do you think that, uh, in reality, we're going to try to, like, get closer to that falsification and be continue to forego our truth? I believe, <laughs> I, I, I truly believe that if, you know, the people in, in power of if they, that's exactly what they want, you know what I'm saying? Because then that just puts us in even more of a powerless feeling of like, I can never be this, I can never be that. And it's like, well, in prior to social media, there was magazines and there were TV shows yeah, and there absolutely. was there's idols. Yeah, you know, social media is just like about. the best it's version of their... It's just the most instant gratification yeah. in our hand distraction tool in our palm to constantly... It's perfect. It's the perfect... You can literally... It's the perfect storm. So <laughs> yeah, even if you don't have is. social media, you can be on a website reading something, you still feel inadequate because you're like, wow, I ain't shit. Like, because I don't have this, that, and third. But I should have had it because if I would have told... If I would have not taken this route and I would have did this route, I would have been that much closer. And we doubt ourselves. And instead of just being like, okay, this is where I'm at, I accept this, yeah, now I can move that's, forward. That's really, yo, bro. It's that's, really anything. The same thing would happen probably if you had a, and went to a library. You know what I'm saying? It's just social media is at our fingertips, so it's that much more. The poison is in our hands in every second rather than in the once a week when we went to the library or looked at Yeah, you, you kind of have to, you kind of have to really, you know, applaud the people that have the, the mental fortitude and the just the tunnel vision to be able to, you know, do what they do and just bypass all this shit because, like, you know, a lot of people are creative, but it's, it's like, can your voice even be heard in this massive, you know, media storm that's constantly happening day, night, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously it can, you can be heard, but, like, the people that stay the path, like, you know what I mean, work a job and, you know, continue to, you know, work on their own personal business, like yourself, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's you, you got to commend people like that. You know, I used to kind of it, it's funny because I used to kind of look at people that that go the social media route and be like, oh, like you're selling. Out. It's it's not so much mm -hmm. that like nobody, nobody that works that system is that into it. They're just 
They learned how to work that system. They learned you know how to be I mean? like, like the, the That's what I'm saying. Person. For me, it's mm-hmm. it, it, it was very hard to retain myself and like it just even from the beginning of it, I didn't even get that deep into it. Like even when Instagram came out, I was just like instantly like, uh mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't like this. You know what I'm saying? Like I was the same way. I was off social media for two years. I was yeah, not bro, on like, anything. I was like, well, this is fake. Every, th- every time I open up my phone, I feel like I'm judging myself. I'm judging these people. It feels so critical, and it doesn't feel positive. And it's like, just like anything else, there can be the change of perspective and using it as a tool. Like, do I still distract myself on social media? Of course I do. I'm a fucking human. Like, there's no, definitely times built, that I it's, do. It's, it's built know? to like, distract you, bro. You know, like, sometimes they, I'm, like, face deep in reels, and I'm just like, what the fuck? They, How long have I been here? You know? That, then, I mean, that's <laughs> definitely, yeah, but that's definitely, like, them playing on human psychology. Without so a doubt. Not, that's not your fault. Like, and then there's also other times where it's like, I remember the breakthrough I had with social media where I was like, oh, shit, people are real. Pe- people can be real on here if they're real with themselves. I seen a bunch of Again, people that were fake that were like not necessarily okay. Let me rephrase that. People that were um, live putting an aesthetic, which is like majority of people you'll find on social media, were putting an aesthetic to appease not only themselves, I mean not only masses, but themselves to like trick themselves into believing that they are this person. And some people need to fake it to make it. So maybe that's their system. Most and I'm not going to judge it. That's- I can't fake it to make I'm not that person like I literally need to be honest with myself exactly where I'm at or else I won't progress if I'm like you are you feel great if I try to do these affirmations like you feel great you are so wealthy you are so okay and all this stuff (laughs) I'll look at myself and be like bitch shut the fuck up you're lying like that's not real you feel like shit right now and that's okay (laughs) because you have every reason to feel like shit right now but you know what you're gonna be all right and then once I start talking to myself the way I feel like I needed to be talked to rather than beating myself up the way I've always been beat up before by literally everyone including yeah, that, myself that, that gets you nothing really <laughs> it doesn't that, that it just you puts you more in, in yeah. a constraint but like with social media when I went back on social media I shared something like I shared something you know like the the experience I had when I was 17 I lost my father was something that was very um uh, mainstream there's something that like so personal and private that got put in newspapers and things of that Damn, sort so, so it's like all of my privacy See, was like removed that's fucked. That's so you fucked, know it was like so i didn't fucked. know who knew and who didn't know about what happened to me so it's like always, my whole yeah, i've always felt that too like yo like when some tragedy happens and people's business in the fuck it's just like what the I fuck did, I thought I sold the newspaper to not take a picture like they literally put like the worst picture too of me ever and I said please don't ever please don't post a picture if you're gonna put, take a picture like like just like cover my face like, please just, I don't even want you to do this like you know like, fuck I, you know <laughs> it's fucking worse but anyway my, my point being is like I went from being like a like either I would anxiously overshare in increments with some people sometimes or I was just more of a like a hard shell I didn't tell people anything really like I like just would internalize everything and then when I was 17 like I had one of the biggest tragedies kind of broadcasted everywhere and I was like wow I have no privacy and majority of people are just looking at me like a tragedy everywhere I go so it's like I didn't know who would know who didn't know but I would be able to know intuitively if, like people would look at me wouldn't even say hi sometimes it would just be like I'm sorry like that would be their hello. And I'm like, fuck, like I had five minutes where I wasn't thinking about this. And now I'm thinking about that's, this yeah, again. That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's like, just like, it's that's so, that's it's so, so invasive fuck. and so fucked up, you know. But my point of bringing that up was then I decided I'm going to be in control of what I share and what people know. And I started taking the route of like, um, I shared a little bit. I remember the first time I ever shared something. I had taken a picture on my phone of the caution tape at in front of my house and it was said um caution in english and in spanish Mm -hmm. and in the picture i just looked at it and it just said dad 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 in all of these corners where it was bent over the bushes it was just a dad 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 everywhere and i was just like whoa that's crazy and i took a picture of it i put on instagram and uh, like a friend of mine, I didn't have Instagram. A friend of mine was like, get Instagram, you're going to like it. It's pictures. Because I used to always, I never had a Twitter up until more recently. And like, I forget what you came first. And I had, <laughs> well, I, I loved MySpace. Like, MySpace, I fucked up because you, like, you know, you, way back, you had, you had, you had, yeah, Facebook, <laughs> I didn't, but Facebook was getting like Twitter. And I was like, oh, Facebook's trash. Everyone's just talking about shit. And I, I'm just here for the pictures. And then my friend was like, you should go on Instagram. It's just pictures. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. 
Um, but MySpace Forever Elite, Tom was the guy, like, that was, but that's just a side note. Um, <laughs> so Instagram, I was on it, and I'm, like, I posted that, and I posted, like, just a short thing, just, like, a little thing. And so many people were, like, thank you so much for sharing this, you know, and it wasn't just, like, the validation. It was, like, the resonance, like, the thing, the little thing that I said. So many people that also experience loss of whether their father or someone else, like, were resonating with it, were writing to me, like, thank you so much for sharing that. And, like, it was just, like, wow, like, I'm not alone. They're not alone. So I don't feel alone, and they don't feel alone, and there's, like, healing in this, you know. And once I noticed that, I was, like, wow, you know, there, I, I'm, I, maybe I'll share something again. I was, like, so scared, like, oh, my God, you know, I, 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 I'm going to share something, and I don't know how people are going to take it. And it was, like, so nerve-wracking. But then I was, like... I started sharing like little things here and there, little things here and there. And then I was finding the balance of like oversharing mm -hmm. and then from and then just sharing a little bit and oversharing and then sharing a little bit. And like that's there's a progression. Even if you look on my Instagram now, like there's a progression. If you scroll all the way back, because that was when I remade it after the two years I took off of social media. That's when I remade it. You'll see like some posts like O D in the caption, like, here's the story of my whole life in this day. <laughs> long story short, still long story long. And uh, and then you'll see one side is just like an emoji, you know. And I was like finding that balance, finding that balance. And then I even talked about it on the first video I ever made. I remember I was like sweating, I was freaking out, and I was like, and I, and I talked on the on the video about, I'm like, what is it that you're looking for when you look at my page? Don't compare you you to me. Like don't don't let me be the catalyst to the committee, the negative committee in your mind. I love you just as you are as you should love me just as I am, as we are human beings and you have a medicine that I can never have, I have a medicine that you can never have, and we all have similar medicine because we're all here. And if you resonate, you resonate. And it's like, I was going into that. I'm like, don't look at me and think like, oh, wow, look at her fucking eyebrows. They're amazing. I wish I had that or this, that, third. Like, look at yourself and think of yourself as something. Like, because just because I have good eyebrows don't mean like I have a fucking great life, you know, whatever the fucking shit is. Like, social media is like, and I, and, and I realize that, if I started sharing, like just having authentic shares and not just like, uh, like, oh, this is a pretty picture or this is a nice food dish and like that more people that needed that message and also more people that needed to be inspired to share, whether on social media or in real life, like was being, that was being promoted and that energy was being cultivated. And there are people that exist on social media that also do that, that I see them and I'm like, I have a friend on social media that I've had literally since I just started that face, uh, the Instagram, I think the first time. Mm -hmm. She's a, a girl from Cali, like, That's that hilarious. I'm like, I, like, I love her. <laughs> like, I, I love her. I don't never met her a day in my life, but I love her. Her and I have just been rocking with each other from the get, seeing each other grow and elevate each other and supporting each other. The way I haven't even been supported by some of my so-called close friends throughout the years, you know? And you realize that... You think that distance has anything to do with that? Or? No, I think that it's the resonance and it's like the same... So if she was here, it would be the same... I feel like there would absolutely be a support and the reason why is because of the resonance. I met people out here yeah. that I might not know like that or even people I do know like that and, they're, and they still support, but you can tell that we're still kind of on the same journey. Like she was doing the same kind of thing that I was doing, was like dabbling in these different things. It's how you use things. Everything could be good and bad or evil and great, whatever, the, whatever you know, polarity, yin yeah. and yang. It could be, and I don't, what is right and wrong? Like, I believe that there is no, that's your truth, selfish. Right? <laughs> exactly. I believe more in, like, selfish, selfish, and selfless. And, like, the balance is in between. I believe that, you know, right or wrong is like, okay, this person solely did this for their personal game and only them. Or... This person is doing this for everyone. But I believe that everyone is also you. So if you're not doing it for, if you're not a part of the everyone, then that's that's really fucked up too. Because then you're then you're doing it to be to people please and you're avoiding yourself too. So once again, you got to find that balance right in between those things. Yeah. It's like super important because you could be like, you could look at the person who does everything for everyone. They get it praised by, oh my God. Thank you. Da, da, da. That person dead ass hate themselves so much and they don't do anything for themselves, but they do it for everybody else and they're motivated by everybody else. And it's not for them to like sit there and like feel horrible, but it's a lot harder for that person to get maybe and to see that they're harming themselves or not considering themselves because they're getting praised by so many people.
Do you think that's their purpose, though, to be a vehicle for other people's success or whatever? Like, I believe that people... in that way they're living their purpose? I believe if they're accounting for themselves. Like, if they're having proper boundaries and accounting for themselves. Absolutely. You can assist in a, in a game. You don't always have to be the person who dunks or shoots a goal. You can assist, of course. We all have the ability to do so, and that could definitely be their purpose, part of their purpose. But their ultimate purpose? No, I don't believe that people are literally just born to assist things. I believe that everyone has a role. And yes, assisting can be a part of that role. But there's also whether that's to become conscious of a certain thing, to stop okay. a certain cycle. Even if it as, you know, everyone has a different puzzle piece that they're fit in. So it's like, I don't think that it, their puzzle piece is literally just the bridge to another puzzle piece. Like you there's believe that another. everyone has their own life output? To, so to speak, like there is something that they will create or construct or not or just destroy or destroy. Okay, yeah, there's that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's definitely <laughs> that's the aspect that people never want to talk about. That, that probably <laughs> happens more often than building, right? Like, yep, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing, letting go. Like you know, it's like that's something that I feel like I learned so much with within my life and like the different practices and the modalities. Like, is like destroying things. Things need to be destroyed. Everyone's so fixated on creating, manifesting, 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 manifesting. What about all the things that you're manifesting all the time that aren't good? Kind of makes me think of uh, Jackson Pollock. I'm not sure if you ever heard of that. Thing. I have heard that name, but I'm having a hard time placing well, it. It's it's the paintings that just look like a bunch of random paint just like thrown on the shit like mm -hmm. over over itself. Or oh, was it that guy? It was one of those guys. He would just do mad random shit and then take stuff away after. Like he would just. Psh, Mm -hmm. and then remove stuff you know what i mean he wouldn't like try to like render an image just on a white sheet he would just throw mad shit and then take shit off and see what comes out of the the chaos i guess you could say you know what i'm saying like and that 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 concept in itself definitely changed society but it's it's still not a, a widespread um concept i guess i know you know well, the, the like way, especially the, the way you're bringing it up it's, it's definitely it's definitely a something to think about i'll tell you that you know what i mean You're right like what's what's impeding you but then yourself if, i mean or is this society yeah well that yes of <laughs> course like there's that there's the microcosm the macrocosm you know it's like i mean there's I, of course there's everything but there are definitely ways in which well, we can like let remove me, let me ask you though, like if if do you what do, to, to what degree do you think we actually impede ourselves compared to our environment impeding us or does our environment just teach us to impede ourselves intrinsically at that point because we're just like oh well i have to you it's know like i mean there's always that gonna be that obviously mm -hmm. right because if, if a person could just sit there and food just comes to them and whatever they want just exactly it's right? gonna be like wally -E. so there's always that like you got to do something to get something mm -hmm. but um just i don't know like it, Obviously, so, so say someone was living on an island, do you think they would have all these impediments that would cause them to have, like, you know, depression or things that would, again, you're denying your truth, so you manifest, I feel like that's a, a big part, like I said before, like, of why there's such a widespread mental health issues that mm -hmm. we literally get used to, like, just, you know, sh shutting ourselves up <laughs> and just bearing through you know gritting our teeth going through these motions that society needs us to do in order to survive and then you just you know you end up getting used to it. you become curmudgeon and grumpy and all these things like do you think that you would still do these things to yourself if if we lived in a even now i'm not even saying if like, like society changed like if you grew up on like a farm or something like do you think that you would have these same impediments these same blockages that we create. I think to a certain degree that we would in different ways. I think that like, you know, everyone has their different struggles. Like for example, like us from New York, we're constantly like, yo, like everywhere is different from New York. You know, like we have our certain struggles and yes we do. But then you talk to somebody who was born in Wisconsin and you find out like people ain't shit over there too. And then people are shit over there too. You know, it's like there's everywhere has a perfectly designed environment to invoke and activate whatever needs to be pried out of our stubborn fucking selves Ooh, okay. you know what i'm saying like it's like every person is different and uniquely themselves and our purposes are different i believe that every single person maybe the harder your circumstances the more 
you that needs to be let go of. Maybe, you know, when you get everything pulled away from you and everything taken away from you is like that's where you learn the most. That's the only way that the stubborn human would be able to remove, <laughs> you know, and then like our spirit would be able to surrender, you know, because our spirit's always ready to surrender. It's really the human vehicle that needs to surrender. Like our spirit's like, duh, the fuck we need to do like i <laughs> i knew this like and then but our body's like no i need to survive this this goes against the logic and everything i've ever been taught i need to survive like if i do this i'm gonna die and yes you are you're gonna die so many times and then you'll actually live in order to live you have to die so many fucking times you have to end so many cycles become aware of the most like yeah. heinous of things to even be able to experience the greatest of things because you know and, and to live in a society where we're so numbed and you know pop a pill fuck a bitch do this do that and everything is all, all good and this is glorified we are like as as numb as numb can be it has i think in ever in society with the level of technology and distractions that we have because of that we i completely lost my thought <laughs> <laughs> i literally completely it literally escaped me i tried so hard to catch it and it was <laughs> fucking gone like i literally i was like it was a point to where i was like getting at damn i was just saying i was talking about distractions i was talking about i i, I had it and you made me lose it too it was, <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn. I, should, oh. I shouldn't have spoke before it came on here you know what i mean wait what was it what was it just saying oh shit well, I mean. Well, yeah, you know, so that's not your truth. Right? Yeah, yeah. Don't deny your truth. You forgot. Don't, you, don't you ever that's deny it. Yeah, that's that's what it is, and that's like. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's like such a good point. Whatever. If it's supposed to come back, it'll come back. I trust and believe that's, that. That's it, Maybe they weren't supposed to know. No, I think maybe I think they, they need to figure it out. They definitely know. I think they definitely know. <laughs> they probably know where I'm going at with it, but you know, it's um, it's definitely. You know, all that intensity is so weird. I just feel like I climbed up a, a fucking mountain and then I just like stopped and I didn't. Oh, look it's that. also, I mean, it's also late. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. So honoring, you know, honoring our truth and doing our best what we have, you know, freeing ourselves of whatever we can in this lifetime. Just literally doing our best. Yeah, I, I think that I, I definitely am going to take something away from that, like getting rid of. <laughs> right. Just lightening the load, making space for new shit. Not better shit, just the next shit, you know? Yeah. And just knowing that we have that, we have the power. It's like, yo, once we start realizing that we co-create our reality, the more people Definitely realize co that we co-create our reality, the more people, the better we can get in the world. I believe that we, you know, when we awaken so to speak for lack of better words or like we act or activate rather i feel i believe that people who can see these things are supposed to activate other people because the more people that are activated and actively pursuing their purpose rather than running away and distracting themselves from what it is that they are supposed to do that's what's going to change the world is the awareness you know the the seed that gets planted will then grow a crop if you continue to like nourish it, you know, and like yeah, pay attention to it. I mean, we're slowly but surely. I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I definitely, you know, I'm very pessimistic about things, but I've I've seen more and more people care about sustainable practices. Um, I just wish like it was just a like a, a government, like, or just a worldwide effort, for real, for real. It's re it still really isn't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It still hasn't really gotten to... Yeah, even the paper bag thing yeah, is, like, like you still, it's the map has some eggs everywhere. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just, like, you know, I, I don't know. Not, I'm, and not to be existentialist or, like, how much time do we have left? But it's just... You know, sometimes it's not even an existentialist thing. It's like again, like I feel like really part of our truth is like living, living in a really cohesive way, and like that that adds a layer of like, just you know, 
like I don't know, like you just feel like shit when you don't really like, you know, when you because we are aware, you know, we 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 kind of dub our own awareness sometimes just to continue through the bullshit. But it's just like, you know, not not to sound like a bitch, but like you know, the same thing with the water bottles, like, like. I'm supporting. I'm directly supporting this this floating plastic island in the in the middle of the ocean that's destroying shit. And it's just like, but I gotta drink this water, bro. I need this. And maybe you're right. Maybe it's something as simple as like getting a canteen and walking around with that. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, who wants to do that? But uh, yeah. And if that's not accessible, then just getting the best possible option of that you can be dealing with. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that Jaden Smith water though. Mm-hmm. It's a it's white and has baby blue on it instead of just water. And then there's other ones that's like there's some plastic bottles that are like maybe recycle, you know, plastic, you know, just look into it and just like look into it, just be aware of your surroundings. That's the best thing that we can do is just be aware of our surroundings and not give in to convenience and give in to like what we can do in that moment. Yeah, that is the hardest thing. It's like that's what settling is, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to settle for this water. Even though, like, cause, cause I just opened it up and I'm so thirsty, I can't, I'm not gonna think about. Well, I, you know, I cut a lot of other things out, like coffee. I, I, I miss coffee, but I don't really drink it anymore. You know what I'm saying? And then, but even when you like, you know, so I'm not adding to the the cups or like the coffee industry, which doesn't really make a difference at all. Like, the Dunkin' Donuts does not give a fuck if I drink their coffee or not, right? But, it, you know, down to the water that I have to drink, it's bottled in this thing that's definitely convenient for society and you know that me right there drinking that water but like ultimately it you know i know in truth and it's part of my I guess my personal truth that it's just you know adding to this problem and then like you said like there's definitely alternatives mm-hmm. what if what if a personal truth for some people like i know for me one of my personal truths is to activate others by embodying and speaking about my personal truth and my active pursuit to it the ups and downs and like you know something you were saying before it's like even before you know this is the first time i'm doing a twitch this is the first time i'm on here i don't know how many people are on here how many are and how many people will see this ever in life or hear it or whatever the case is but prior to any of that you know right before i uh we went live like Earlier in the day, I came on. I'm I'm used to it. Wednesday mornings, I do I do the show. But I was so anxious. I was so nervous, and I was like, "Why do I feel like I look different? Why do I feel like I don't like this? Why I want to I want to wear a different shirt? I want to cover my arms? Like all these different things." I started like the committee started yapping in my head, and I was gonna change my shirt. And I was gonna do all these things. I was getting up. I was fidgety, and you know, some of the emails said when I came and sat down, it's like, oh, you know, you you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm better. And it's like, well, what's going on? It's like. And he looked at me, he's like, you know, denying your truth. And I'm like, <laughs> and I laughed, like, because I'm like, yeah, because, like, it really was. Like, I was looking at myself in my reflection. And instead of just accepting myself as I am in this moment, I was criticizing everything I am in this moment. I was like, oh, well, you know, you look bigger on this camera than you did earlier this morning. Like, you know, your hair's frizzy on this side. This is going over <laughs> here. Like, you know, this shirt doesn't isn't looking the same way it looked earlier. The lighting's different. All these different things that I was beating myself up for. And then I was just like, for what? I could just accept the fact that this is who I am right now. Like, I don't need help on beating myself up. Like, there's nobody in the world that can beat me up more than I've beaten myself up. You know, and I believe that that's why, like, I go the route of, which I say all the time, it's like the eight mile route, where it's like, you're like, yeah, I I do live in a trail park with my mom. I did get (laughs) nervous before this fucking podcast. I was criticizing myself. I was like, damn, like. We did forget completely what we were talking about. We did. It happened. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not perfect. It's not, it's not, like, it's not a scope. Like, I'm not going to ever be that person that's like, yo, like, oh my God, I have to have everything, like, so perfect and everything. It's like, because I will, I am spastic as fuck. Yeah. I will fuck it up. If somebody like comes over here, if I had a makeup artist that everything was pretty and perfect, <laughs> guarantee you, I'll like take a, I'll sneeze on some, I will knock something over, my yeah, eyelash super. will come flying off. Because that's just who I am. So why am I gonna deny my truth on being a fucking human, having an experience? You know, like I'm not gonna say prim and proper. I'm like sometimes I sit like a fucking croissant. You know, other times I'm like, all right, here's my posture. I need to sit up. I need to do this. You know, there's just we're just people. Yeah. And the more we accept our humanness, we could be like, wow, I was listening to this podcast and that person was real fucking human for a second. And they got well, a podcast. Ho- I mean, hopefully, right? Hopefully we bring that element. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, For sure. 
hopefully the the late night vibe also you know allows people to relax a little bit more and just uh, accept that truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean. And moving forward, like you know, this is the first one, so I kind of kind of had a long day and stuff like that. But in the yeah, future, like keeping it light right now, keeping man. it light. You know, there's other things that are gonna happen. You know, and other aspects of what's gonna make it duality at night. We're just gonna kind of see where that goes. Whether that's like incorporating, you know, sometimes maybe having sake, sometimes maybe having a joint. Like what? Who knows? I it was gonna who knows what's gonna happen? What, what happened? I, to that? Okay, you, you know, I was looking forward to that. You know, maybe, maybe another time. Maybe another time. Just the first time. We're going to see how this one goes. Touch, you know, baby steps, dip a toe, but you'll be back. You know, thank you for being the first person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, thank you for being with the shits literally earlier and, like, being catalyst for this even happening. I was not going to bullshit you again. Like, yeah, 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 next Wednesday. I'll be, like, the third, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Let's, let's do this shit. No, and it's and it good. And that's, like, how this was created and birthed. So that was the process, you know. So thank you. It takes, it, it doesn't, we can't do it all ourselves. And the moment we realize that we can't do it all ourselves, and we can accept help and allow others to inspire us and give people credit for that too. Like how like, yo, like you dead ass are a reason this is happening right now. I'm going to gladly give you that credit. Thank you for that. Because if I, you didn't answer the phone call, I wouldn't have did this today. You know what I'm saying? And like more people, rather than being like caught up in there, well, I worked so hard to do this and get here, uh, 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 yeah, and yeah, don't yeah, give yeah. people credit. That's where I feel like we go sour in humanity because then we don't feel like we need anyone, but we do. Yeah, we do. And so we're once again, denying a truth. Yeah, we definitely do. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we go, is there anything else you want to add? Anything you want to say? No, nah, I mean, I definitely hope we do this again. You know what I'm saying? I, I want to, there's definitely some specific topics I want to delve in. Um, I like that we did this, this little crash course in podcasting. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it'll definitely get more structured, more uh, attenuated <laughs> as we move along. You mm -hmm. know? But, yeah. For sure, for sure. Thank you so much for coming on to the Thank you, show, bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you for calling me. Of all course, that. man. Yeah. And like every time we have a conversation, it's a fucking podcast. Like, the least <laughs> I could do was invite some people to it. That's, like, a, that's a real yo, truth, it also. It really is. Like, sometimes I'll be, especially like now that I have a podcast, I'm like, sometimes I'll be on the phone, I'm like, damn. Yeah, I know. Gems. The world is Gems. deprived right now of this conversation. They need to hear it. They need to know, but the fact that we're those, having those it, conversations are also during the day when we're at our, <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying, our peak. Yeah, that's true. Well, well, maybe one day you'll come for the morning, too. When I start living my truth and I don't have to work a nine to five. Or, you know, you know like, <laughs> or when you find that middle ground of transitioning from one to another, maybe taking less days, starting working on your schedule and finding what works without just jumping into the abyss. That'd be, that'd be great. You know, because that's one thing. Like, we don't always have to in, to it, fulfill our pursuits. We don't always have to just jump into the fucking void and be like swinging from something another thing. Like, we could still like ease out of things. You know, okay, maybe I'll work three days. Maybe I'll work four days. Maybe, you know. And like, we need to remember we have the power to also do that. And if that employer isn't going to do that, if you own your own business, I feel like you could definitely. Make yes, you can. But also, even if you don't, like, even when I was working at. You know, I, I'm not going to say any names of places because, like, it's a big company that provides coffee, you know. And when I was working at this big corporate job, not corporate job, you know, uh, be my barista self. <laughs> like, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to change my schedule. I'm going to lessen my day. We forget that we do because we're so convinced. Well, I work five days and that's how I make the money. And that's how I make this X amount of money. But if you time yourself and you're like, okay, if I don't, if I start working three days, then I'll have more time two days that I can make money in in a creative way, you know? So that's what I started doing. I started, I picked up another job and that other job didn't beat me up and paid me twice the amount of money that I was getting the other way. And I worked half the amount of hours. So I had more time to start focusing on my creative and in invaders, you know, how I say mm -hmm. people. Um, <laughs> and I was able to bring more things to fruition because it's not ever a lack of like ideas for me. It's always just a matter of like following through and like to finish, like finish something I started rather yeah, than absolutely. starting 700 things yeah. and then being like, Oh my God, <laughs> I can't finish 700 things. Let me just make seven more. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know so. Yeah, man. Yeah. 
So thank you everybody who tuned in. You know, Wednesdays at eleven PM we're gonna be doing this. I believe, you know, we'll see what goes on. But that seems like to be what the thing is. And if you're interested in tuning in on the daytime podcast, this will be the thirty ninth episode that has ever existed, but the first episode of the nighttime one. And you can find that on any other social media platform, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you can, if you want to see the visual, you can go to YouTube. It's all duality, D-U-A-L-I-T-E-A, podcast. You kind of search that wherever and see what where you get with it. So thank you all for tuning in and hope to interact with y'all again soon.